Hi and welcome to my quick presentation on the science of a SEA. My name is John Norton. I've been with the company since day one. I'm a founding Triple Diamond and a few of my friends have asked me to put this video together on the science of a SEA. So uh, the question I want to address is what is a SEA and how does it work in the body? To take you through uh, four quick steps that are important to understand and if you understand these four things you pretty much understand what a C is and how it works in the body. The first one I want to focus on is the cell. Then I want to look at what happens when cells get damaged. What we have done in the past which is uh, had these consumable or plant derived antioxidants that we can pop in our mouth. Um, what we can now do in the future with the discovery of a SEA and redox signaling molecules that are balanced that actually create a different type of antioxidant, much, much stronger, right inside the cell. Uh, this presentation is brought to you by an independent, independent ASEA associate, not ASEA the company. The ASEA product is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease or health condition. So let's take a look at the cell. Uh, there are about 75 trillion cells in our body. Um, all of them have a nucleus, they have multiple mitochondria, and they have a cell wall that leaves some things out of the cell, but can also take some things through the cell. The mitochondria are what I want to focus on right now. They represent the battery packs, or the energy of the body. About 98% of our energy comes from the ATP that comes out of the mitochondria. And uh, the nucleus uh, contains the DNA and also is able to send signals into the cell to help clean it up and fix it. But let's take a look at the mitochondria and see what's going on in there. There is a process that allows us to take the food that we eat in our mouths, uh, fats, proteins, and carbs, and turns it into energy. Uh, those things oftentimes are broken down into simple sugars. This one here I'm showing is glucose. They will pass through the cell wall, this nutrition, and enter into the mitochondria and start to go through the Krebs cycle or the uh, citric acid cycle. There are other names for it. But I'm showing it here very, very simply. There are different uh, uh, stations on this electron transport chain that kicks off little tiny molecules in a perfect balance of red and green. Now, those molecules are called redox signaling molecules. And they're the exact same molecules you find out in every bottle of ASEA. Let me drill down a little bit to help you understand what they are. But by the end of this cycle, you can see that it kicks off ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy that we use uh, to think a thought, to move, to blink. Everything that we do requires ATP. So the Krebs cycle is very, very important, but it wasn't until just recently they realized the importance of these little tiny molecules, the red and the green redox signaling molecules. Let's take a look at them. There are two sets of molecules. One represents the army, or the weapon of choice for the immune system. It targets external threats, viruses, bacteria, invading pathogens, etc. The other one is the shield. Now, this was discovered after the army, and they realized that once you have a perfect uh, amount of army and shield, a cell is very healthy. It's called homeostasis. That cell functions properly. It can eliminate things that shouldn't be in there, and the, uh, the shield creates protective enzymes and coats the organelles and cell walls and things that are good in the body so that the army doesn't destroy the good, the good things. Uh, let's uh, drill down and, and understand now the second point, what happens when cells get damaged. Uh, a damaged cell will actually show an increase or an overproduction of ROS. And ROS is the army. So the army is now almost running rampant. There's not enough shield to protect the organelles within that cell. And uh, you can see there's damage being done on the mitochondria and on the DNA. Now focus on this yellow box. This is a very important statement. All health problems can be linked to damaged cells. So if we can clean up the cells, we can literally eliminate or minimize the damage and uh, uh, address something that is uh, representative in all health problems. Oxidative stress, which is what we're talking about here, an overabundance of the army, is known to be the primary, if not the leading contributor, to 200 health challenges. This is amazing. You say, well, how do, how do you get oxidative stress? What happens or, or what causes these cells to be damaged? You can see the list here. Stress, prescription drugs, Excessive or no exercise, negative mental attitude, electromagnetic radiation, ultraviolet radiation, 
food additives and preservatives, insecticides, pesticides, growth hormones, lack of nutrition, whole grains, fruits and vegetables. And they say that there have been over 80,000 toxic industrialized chemicals dumped into our environment in the last 80 years. No wonder we're struggling so mightily with our health and why our health care costs have gone through the roof. An article I, I read recently said that we're exposed to more pollutants in 15 minutes than our great-great-grandfathers were in their entire lifetimes in just 15 minutes. The air that we breathe, the water we drink, the food that we eat, major, major pollutants. And then I started studying how many free radicals we actually have in our body. Can you eliminate them with the plant antioxidants? And the answer was a resounding no. There are 100 sextillion bad guys that are created in our bodies every single day. That's a one with 23 zeros behind it. And they say that we would literally have to eat a truckload of plant antioxidants in order to keep up. Amazing. So let's take a look at what we've been trying to do for the last 30 years and the reason why some of these diseases like cancer and uh, diabetes and autism are just increasing at an exponential rate almost. The last 30 years we have focused on plant or consumable antioxidants. There are about 7,000 of them. All but just a very few of them are too large to pass through the cell wall. And remember that uh, yellow box I showed you before? Every single health problem is linked to damaged cells. So if we can't get inside the cells to clean them up, no wonder we're not doing much along the lines of helping our bodies to become healthier. The next point is that these plant antioxidants are not messaging molecules. It would be like picking up a rock and calling the fire department. No one's going to come to help clean up the cell or the tissue or the organ. They just don't know where to go in a sense. Mm -hmm. The effectiveness of a plant antioxidant is a ratio of one to one, meaning for every free radical you need one antioxidant, plant antioxidant. Remember that the number of free radicals we create in our body every single day is 100 sextillion, one with 23 zeros behind it. So you simply can't eat enough plant antioxidants to keep up. Now let's take a look at what ASEA can do. In every bottle of ASEA there are redox signaling molecules. They are not antioxidants but they are signaling molecules that can go in and penetrate the cell wall, penetrate the blood-brain barrier into the mitochondria or even into the nucleus and trigger the production of natural antioxidants. I want to talk a little bit about that in a second. The ASEA molecules are three to four atoms in size, so they're very, very small and they absorb quickly and easily in our mouth, in our throat and into our stomach and uh, into the intestines and they immediately go to work. They are messaging molecules so they know exactly where to go to find the right neighborhood. In a sense they're using cell phones to pass the information throughout the body. So if I've got a problem in my ear or in my lung or liver or my knee they know exactly where to go cleaning up the body. Now this last point is amazing. Uh, the effectiveness of a natural antioxidant is 70 million free radicals to every natural antioxidant every second. So they continue to clean up second after second after second and they can wipe out 70 million free radicals every single second. So finally we have something that allows us to get inside the cell, to go to the right cells that are actually damaged and to be able to clean them up uh, in no time at all because these natural antioxidants, one is called glutathione and I want to talk about that now, but they can actually clean those cells up uh, very, very quickly. So this is what the cell should look like once it's all done. You can see that there are three large glutathione natural antioxidants inside this cell. They've brought the cell into a state of homeostasis, a good balance of ROS and RS, the shield and the army, and the cell is healthy. And what that means is if you can have a lot of those cells healthy, the tissue is going to be healthy and the organ will be healthy and you are healthy. Your lung or your liver, your heart or your brain is functioning and working properly. This is what we want to see happen. So let's take a look at one of the three natural antioxidants that ASEA helps the body to create. Increases the production and turns them up between 500 and 800 uh, percent. The three, by the way, are glutathione, SOD or superoxide dismutase, and catalase. But let's focus on glutathione because they say it's the most important molecule you need to stay healthy. It's also referred to as the master antioxidant or the mother of all antioxidants and we lose 15% of it every decade starting at about age 20. 
So by the, by the time you're 40, 50, 60, 70, you've got very, very low levels of glutathione generally. And they have done studies of the number of people in the hospital, and they have found that after drawing glutathione levels in that T-bars test, they've learned that 8 out of 10 of the people that are hospitalized with chronic illness are there because they have low levels of glutathione. So imagine how much we can save on health care costs and uh, if we uh, can increase the amount of glutathione in blood and tissue, we can send maybe 8 out of 10 people who are hospitalized home and save 8 out of 10 of our health care dollars. In the future, doing things to raise glutathione levels will be as common as brushing your teeth. So you may say, well, how come I've never heard, never heard of glutathione? I know all about antioxidants. Well, doctors don't really know yet how to get glutathione into the cell. So 80% of the glutathione that's prescribed is prescribed orally, and we know that glutathione dies in the digestive tract. It simply can't absorb into the body because it's so large. The other 20% uh, is actually uh, given uh, as an injection into our circulatory system, our blood. Uh, but again, because those molecules are so large, a couple hundred atoms in size, they simply can't penetrate the cell wall. So uh, doctors have been struggling with, they know that glutathione is, uh, with, with this uh, concept, they know glutathione is important, but they simply don't know how to get it inside of cells until now, we have a CF. So uh, Jean Carper is one of the leading authorities in the United States on health nutrition. She has written about 25 books that are on the New York Times bestseller and is probably considered one of the top nutritionists in the world. She says if you, uh, you must get your levels of glutathione up if you want to keep your youth and live longer. High blood levels of glutathione predict good health as you age and a long life. Low levels predict early disease and death. And they have done study after study and shown that it is the one predictor for a good, long, healthy life to have high levels of glutathione. Again, a CN 